are you feeling in two areas of your life or maybe one or maybe even more that you desperately need to take action and you want to take action and you know there are big projects lined up after 25th of April. Do you feel like that? If yes, then write it down in the comments. <laughs> because Venus, the planet of love, romance, beauty, sexuality and relationships is going to enter the sign of Aries from 25th of April this year to 19th of May. As you know, Venus stays in a sign for roughly 25 days. So very, very, very important transit. Please check your ascendant, your lagna, your rising sign, your first house. And then where is Taurus and Libra from there? All right. So these two houses will be facing this effect. But what is interesting more is that Jupiter is currently in the sign of Aries, as you know. And on 1st of May, he will enter Taurus. So that means for the first week, around seven days, Jupiter and Venus will be conjunct, right? And then Jupiter will go into the sign of Taurus, which is again the own, uh, own sign of Venus, right? And then Jupiter will be there, of course, for one year. Uh, and till 19th, and on 19th, Venus will also enter into the sign of Taurus, okay, 19th May. So that means uh, finally Venus and Jupiter are meeting. You know, they meet once a year <laughs> or sometimes could be even more, but generally once a year they meet. <clears throat> they meet and when they meet, what happens? You know, there are new beginnings. See, a uh, long time back, I made a video in my YouTube channel. Um, the greatest blessings of Jupiter and Venus. Okay, so if you have not watched this video, then please, 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 please watch that video because it is very important for you to understand that anything good that you see in this world is because of these two planets. Anything, anything, anything. It could be something small or something very big. Okay. It's all there in these two planets. Apart from these two planets, there's uh, nothing much good left. <laughs> <laughs> all right so what happens when a planet enters aries and now what happens when this planet is a natural benefit and also what happens if that planet is also conjunct jupiter that's exactly what we are going to discuss today and as usual if you're new to the channel then please subscribe and hit the thumbs up uh, if you like this video and God is there with you all the time, just look to him and you will find him. And for consultations, you can always go to my website down in the description section. So Venus is entering Aries with Jupiter. Now, what is Aries? Aries is the first sign of the Kalpurush Kudli. Is the first sign. Imagine what happens when the first sign gets activated. What happens? There are new beginnings. Uh, but is it just so simple, you know, oh, it's Aries, you know, it has to be new beginnings. Well, not exactly. <clears throat> new beginnings could also mean that there are endings. You are leaving certain things because without leaving things in there cannot be new beginnings. Okay, so it can mean one of the two things. It can mean either you are leaving something which you are doing now and you are starting something new or you are continuing to do what you are doing and you are taking some other project on top. Now, if your dashas are good, then you will most likely continue the work that you are doing and take some additional uh, load or responsibility on top. And if your dashas are not the best, then uh, you might be forced to end things also, right? So therefore, please check which Mahadasha, Antardasha you are running. And within that, if Venus is associated, so Venus, Antardasha, Mahadasha, Venus, Jupiter or Mars, one of the three, if they are involved or if two of them are involved, like, you know, Venus, Mars, Mars, Venus, Jupiter, Venus, uh, but primarily, let's not talk about Jupiter, primarily it's Mars and Venus. So, <clears throat> as you know, when a planet enters Aries, first it will enter Ashwini, right? Unless it is retrograde, then it will enter Kritika first Pada. But ideally, it will enter first pada of Aries, uh, I mean Ashwini Nakshatra. So what is Ashwini Nakshatra? Ashwini Nakshatra is related to the Ashwini Kumaras, right? And in the Mahabharat, we know uh, Ashwini Kumaras, you know, they are uh, Nakul and Sehdev. They are like, they are, you, you could say, you know, their expansions or their descendants, okay? 
<clears throat> so if you if you want to know more about Ashwini Nakshatra, you should study these two characters from the uh, Mahabharat. Very, very, very important and very interesting characters. Although they are not so much in the limelight because there are other, you know, personalities like uh, Lord Krishna, of course, and then Arjun, Bhim, Yudhishthir and all, and among the Pandavas especially. And then because of that, they somehow are not in the limelight. But on the contrary, Ashwini is an akshatra which loves to be in the limelight. Ashwini is an akshatra which, which tells you that I want all the limelight. Because if you see what is their fifth to... Uh, uh, fifth to Aries. Okay, the fifth sign from Aries is the fifth sign, literally, which is Leo. So, the fifth house tells you what you desire. So, planet in Aries will desire Leo, which is name fame. Okay, so people say Aries is the uh, sign which shows name fame. No, actually, it is not. But Leo is the sign which shows name fame. So, name fame, or you could say, you know, like uh, stardom, something like that, which is again name fame. <clears throat> so. A planet, when it, whenever it transits Aries, you will want to do certain things in a way that you get visibility. So, for example, if Venus is your 10th Lord and Venus is entering Aries, then what does it mean? It means you will want to do something in your job or in your business which makes you stand out, which makes you, which gives you this feeling that I'm doing something which nobody is doing. And the more you do that, the more you will become famous. So therefore, as I said, your dashas will tell you, is it a new addition? Is it, is it an addition to your existing status or it is an ending and a new beginning of something else? So therefore, do not ignore the dashas. Okay, very, very, very important. So for example, if uh, you are running the dasha of the 10th house, okay, so the 10th house is activated in your dashas. And also adding to that, Venus is your 10th lord, which means... Either you are running Venus Dasha or maybe, uh, for example, you know, Saturn is in uh, your 10th house, lauded by Venus and Saturn Mahadasha Antar Dasha is running. So now what is happening? Your 10th Lord is getting activated. So now because the Dasha is also indicating 10th house and the 10th Lord is also entering Aries, there could be something bombastic, okay? There could be something uh, big that you've announced, okay? Some big person you are collaborating with or if you are a YouTuber, you know, some big guest is coming to your channel or you have got the invitation to some big channel, okay? So therefore, you need to understand that the transits will only speak in the language of the Mahadasha and the Antardasha, okay? So otherwise, see what happens is every year, you will see, oh, Venus is transiting Aries, something new will happen. You know, Mars transits Aries, new happen, new things are happening. Jupiter transits Aries, new beginnings, okay? New, 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 but what is that new? All right, what the hell is that new thing that somebody tell me? Well, that your dashas will tell, but transits act like trigger events, okay? So, for example, your dasha is indicating, like, as I said, your Saturn is in... Libra in the 10th house, okay? So you are a Capricorn Lagna, for example. So then what happens? You are running Saturn Antar Dasha, for example. Okay, just, just an example to understand. So if you are running Saturn Antar Dasha for a Capricorn Ascendant, now the 10th Lord is entering Ashwini. So now you will want the limelight, okay? So now you would want to be in the forefront, okay? You literally want to do something. Okay, very, very, very important. I know Capricorn Ascendants who uh, who have told me that, you know, some something new they are going to start. Okay, But for that, you also have to have um, the Dasha of Saturn. Now, for Capricorn, of course, this becomes even more important because Saturn is not only their 10th, uh, is, is in their 10th house, for example, but Saturn is also their Lagdesh, okay? So then this becomes massive, okay? So essentially, if you are a Capricorn Lagna and your Saturn Antar Dasha is running and your Saturn is in the 10th house, then something massive can happen, okay? Not for every Capricorn Ascendant, not for anybody who has Saturn in 10th, but if you are a Capricorn Lagna with Saturn in 10th, with Saturn Antar or Mahadasha, then something big can happen, okay? <clears throat> but now suppose Venus is your 10th Lord. Uh, so, sorry, Venus is your 7th Lord. Okay, so Venus is lording the 7th house. So then what happens? What can happen? <laughs> then some new beginnings could happen in relation to your relationships. Now, 
not necessarily your love life or your married life. It could also be business partnerships. Okay, so for example, <clears throat> Uh, if your dasha is indicating there is something going on with the 2nd, 6th or 10th, then it is something new related to business partnerships. But if you are running the dasha of the 2nd, 7th or 11th, then it means it is something to do with marriage. Okay, so some uh, you, 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 may, you may develop some, uh, if you are unmarried, you may get married, you know, or you may get marriage proposals. If you are already married, then there could be some issue which you need to fix. Okay. And you are taking some initiatives. Okay. So for that, so that is how you have to actually understand. And because Jupiter is there in the initial seven days, Jupiter expands uh, anything that it is with, right? So because of this, there will be positivity. You will get confidence and you will feel that, yes, I can do this and I should do this and I need to do this. I must do this. Okay. So therefore, <clears throat> if you have any plans, so just check the houses that Venus lords. If you have any plans, then don't think twice. Just implement it unless you have to empty your bank account. <laughs> okay. So therefore, go and check where which houses Venus rules in your chart. And because of Ashwini Kumaras, you might need to do things together with somebody. So collaboration could be required okay? because it's very surprising. I mean, Aries is the sign of individuality, but seventh from Aries, there is Libra. So when you are in Aries, you may sometimes feel that, oh, I am sufficient. I am enough. I am independent. I don't need anybody. But maybe Ashwini Kumaras, they are always two, right? So you might need one counterpart. So maybe... You, you are planning to open some startup, you know. So then it can happen that you are very good at technology, but you need some uh, somebody for, you know, the, like marketing and all this, okay. So therefore, you have to understand that you have to see your chart first, then your dashas, and then the transits, okay. I keep saying this always. So when you do this, at the end, you will realize that there are new beginnings happening somewhere. But this event this transit is acting like a trigger so it can happen that something has already started so for example as i said if you are capricorn lagna with saturn in 10th and saturn dasha is running from six months so it is possible <clears throat> that six months back you might have started uh, thinking about your uh, startup journey or whatever you know something to do about uh, in, in your profession because saturn is in the 10th Lagnesh in 10th, Dasha is active, so something to do with profession, big way. But maybe these six months you were working in the background and now as soon as Saturn uh, in uh, Libra, Dasha is going, but as soon as your Venus enters Ashwini, now you know, oh yes, now is the time I launch my startup, all right? Now is the time I go for funding, now is the time I do something in social media, so now is the time... I put it out there in the world, okay? So if your 10th house is associated and you were doing something and you are not getting recognition, name, fame, power, position, then now is the time you do it, okay? So therefore, great time, excellent time, stupendous for new beginnings and do not forget the dashas. Check the chart, dashas, and then you see the transits, okay? And at the end, also don't forget which house... <coughs> Aries is because that is where you will get the resources okay so for example if Aries is your you know third house so maybe you might get the resources that Venus needs depending on the lordships through the third house so maybe you have to do some presentation marketing and all this you know then you will get results okay so that's how you actually judge it so don't just see the lordships see see also where Aries is all right and that, that is where you will find the instruments and the resources to achieve your goals and objectives, which are indicated by lordships. Okay, very simple principle of astrology. All right. Thank you so much for your patience and for consultations regarding your chart. You can always go to my website down in the description section. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. Thank you.